So in the last video, we talked about contemplation and how Deleuze and Guattari understand contemplation to be distinct from philosophy. Philosophy, they say, is the art of forming concepts. Contemplation is necessarily not philosophy, they argue, since contemplation is some mode of thinking, some activity uh, in which we look at, consider, or think about these very concepts that philosophy generates. So they're two different things. In this video, we're going to talk about the second activity that Deleuze and Guattari distinguish from philosophy, and that is something they call reflection. In what is philosophy, Deleuze and Guattari write, philosophy is not reflection because no one needs philosophy to reflect on anything. It is thought that philosophy is being given a great deal by being turned into the art of reflection, but actually it loses everything. Mathematicians, as mathematicians, have never waited for philosophers before reflecting on mathematics, nor artists before reflecting on painting or music. So long as their reflection belongs to their respective creation, it is a bad joke to say that this makes them philosophers. So it's hard to say for sure what Deleuze and Guattari mean by reflection. And the reasons they give for distinguishing reflection from philosophy are not very clear. On its own, this is just the nature of reading a difficult text, sure. We do need to know what the authors mean when they employ certain terms, certain technical terms in their work, so that we can understand their arguments. But, of course, it's not unreasonable for uh, philosophers to expect their readers to put in a little bit of effort into understanding what they want to say. This doesn't have as much really to do with that. It doesn't really have much to do with the style or the particular tradition that Deleuze and Guattari are working in. This has everything to do with the line of argumentation, as we will extract from this block of text. A lot of people criticize the continental philosophers because they don't think that they say anything. They think that um, whatever they're arguing for doesn't make sense, or it's just gibberish or nonsense. Um, I don't think that's the problem here. I think actually the problem isn't that Deleuze and Guattari aren't saying anything. Rather, with the way that they treat reflection, it, it's, it's that they're saying too much. They're saying too many different things at once. They're making a couple of arguments, and each one seems to diverge into a totally different direction which makes it a little bit confusing to understand exactly what the, the main goal of this uh, little bit of text is supposed to accomplish. There are two distinct arguments being made here. One is that philosophy is not reflection, and the other is that reflection does not need philosophy. What isn't really clear is why both of these arguments are necessary, since the latter seems to presuppose the former. What I mean is, if reflection doesn't need philosophy, or even if it did, suppose it did, either way, that kind of already presupposes that they're two different things. To say that one thing needs something else, or that it doesn't need something else, is already to presuppose that you're talking about two different things. It's not clear at this point what their distinction follows from, since they still haven't explained exactly why they think philosophy is different from ref uh, reflection, or even what exactly they think reflection is, but we can, be sh we can be sure that the distinction between philosophy and reflection does not follow from the fact that reflection doesn't need philosophy. There's no actual connection uh, between those two ideas. Before we get much further, I think we should try and find something that we can say definitively about what Deleuze and Guattari have in mind when they use this term reflection, at least insofar as how it's supposed to be distinguished from philosophy. There is a, a work uh, of Deleuze's, it's a, um, a collection of works of letters and conversations and essays uh, called Negotiations. And there is a transcript of a conversation he had in 1985 called Mediators uh, in, this, in this anthology. And in this conversation, 
Deleuze says something very interesting, very straightforward, in fact, about philosophy and its difference from reflection. He says that the philosopher reflects. He doesn't create. I'll, actually, I'll read the whole section because it's, it's very illuminating. He says, In barren times, philosophy retreats to reflecting on things. It's in air quotes. If it's not itself creating anything, what can it do but reflect on something? So it reflects on eternal or historical things, but can itself no longer make any move. Philosophers aren't reflective, but creative. What we should do, in fact, is stop allowing philosophers to reflect on things. The philosopher creates. He doesn't reflect. Now, I don't know exactly why Deleuze and Guattari didn't specify this in what is philosophy. Maybe they thought it was implied, or maybe they presumed the reader would already know that Deleuze and or Guattari would have already had this understanding of reflection as distinct from philosophy. But in any case, we can, we can determine now that the principal difference between reflection and philosophy seems to be that philosophy is a creative activity, whereas reflection is apparently not. Now we can go back to our block of text from what is philosophy, where they say that philosophy is thought to be uh, given a great deal by being turned into the art of reflection, but in fact it loses everything. Well, now we understand what, what that means. Of course it loses everything, because if reflection is not a creative activity, then by being turned into the art of reflection, philosophy loses that essential creative aspect of it that makes philosophy what it is for Deleuze and Guattari. So a little bit more is clear now. Philosophy is not reflection because philosophy is a creative act, creates concepts. Reflection is not a creative act, doesn't create anything. But we're approaching a, a new problem here. Recall that contemplation is distinguished from philosophy on the basis that philosophy creates concepts and contemplation contemplates concepts. So it may not be explicit, but it is implied that contemplation is no more a creative activity than reflection. So this begs the question, why are they distinguishing both contemplation and reflection from philosophy if apparently the only difference between them and philosophy is that philosophy is creative and contemplation and reflection are not creative? Why don't they just choose one or the other? There's got to be something different between reflection and contemplation, something which uniquely distinguishes each of them from philosophy. I think that an answer to this question can be found in this rather poetic section where Deleuze and Guattari talk about mathematicians and artists in connection to philosophy contrasted with reflection. First, they say that mathematicians and artists have never waited for philosophers to reflect. That's very interesting. Why is that? They don't say explicitly. We're going to have to do a little bit of guesswork here, but I think we can make a reasonable inference about what they have in mind. Consider, consider a mathematician or an artist, a painter. We'll use, we'll use painter. They also mentioned music. We'll, we'll stick with painting. Um, consider a mathematician who devises some kind of mathematical formula. And now they're looking at their chalkboard or their napkin or whatever they scribbled it down on. And it's this great equation. It, it answers some important problem that people have been trying to solve for years. And they're standing back and looking at it. Or take an artist who's just completed a, a, a work that they've uh, painted. They've just com completed a painting, and they're standing back and, and taking it all in. Well, as the creators of these creations, uh, a formula in the case of the mathematician and a painting in the case of the artist, 
they are necessarily apprehending something with which they would be intimately familiar, since, after all, it came from them. So they would be very closely connected to it. And maybe what Deleuze and Guattari are saying is that in such a moment where you're apprehending something that you've created, you are not thinking in terms of concepts. You are just apprehending the thing as it appears to you. Maybe. There's a couple of problems with that. First of all, that's kind of controversial. Not everyone would agree that we are not thinking in terms of concepts. There are certainly some philosophers of mind and maybe psychologists who, who think that we do use concepts uh, all the time. There's quite a lot of philosophers and psychologists and other other scholars who, who don't think we do. And actually, there's a very interesting article I read recently that uses a an optical illusion to sort of demonstrate that we, we do not think conceptually when we are perceiving something. And I'll, I'll link something about that article in the strip, uh, description because it's very interesting. But in any case, that is still something very controversial. And it's not very wise to introduce too many controversial claims to support something that is your main argument, which if your main argument is interesting anyway, it's going to be controversial enough for, for itself. Um, second, it's something that's very unclear is whether Deleuze and Guattari are talking about painting or painting. What I mean is, are Deleuze talking about painting as such, the idea of painting, are they talking about when an artist reflects on the craft, on the discipline? Or are they talking about when an artist reflects on a particular work of art, on a particular painting? Um, in the uh, example I used, I was talking about a specific painting. But if you look closely at the way they word it, that's not quite what they're talking about. Now, the problem with the way they talk about it is, in my view, that just leads us back to square one. It leads us back to contemplation, because if you're saying that an artist is reflecting on the idea of art, on the craft of art, or a mathematician is reflecting on the idea of mathematics, on the form of mathematics, you see where we're going here? We're getting back to contemplation, where we're not contemplating anything other than concepts. We're contemplating our ideas, our forms. So again, it brings us back to square one of what's the difference between contemplation and reflection. Here's what we know. Deleuze and Guattari think reflection is not philosophy. We know that. We also know that Deleuze and Guattari think reflection is not the same as contemplation. Otherwise, they wouldn't insist on using the two. I'm, I'm assuming that they have something in mind. It's just not very clear what that is. But they clearly don't think reflection and contemplation are the same thing. Otherwise, they would have simply chosen one or the other. Or, alternatively, as we saw with the Venn diagrams, they could have just said, well, anything that's not a creative activity, that's not philosophy. They could have just done that and made it very simple. But there must be some specific reason why they're, why they're highlighting both contemplation and reflection. And we haven't even gotten into communication, which is the third activity that they distinguish from philosophy. But what we can say is that however they understand reflection, we know that it is not the creation of concepts and it is not thinking about concepts. If reflection isn't thinking about concepts, then that would solve our problem that we saw in the Venn diagrams. The problem was okay, reflection and contemplation aren't philosophy, but what's the difference between reflection and contemplation? If reflection is a mode of thinking which doesn't need concepts, and maybe that's what they mean when they say reflection doesn't need philosophy, if it doesn't need the art of forming concepts, maybe that means, maybe that just simply means they don't need concepts to reflect. <laughs> which would explain how reflection is different from contemplation, which is that basically contemplation is a kind of thinking that is concerned with concepts. It needs concepts to contemplate, whereas reflection, whatever it is, 
doesn't need concepts. So at the end of it all, we still don't actually know what reflection is, um, but we know a little bit more about what it's not and why it's not what it's not. We know it's not philosophy because it's not creative, and we know it's not contemplation because it's not concerned with concepts. So to sum up, and, and the main goal here is, we, is to try and you know, see if we can find some sense of reflection that we can carry with us so that when Deleuze and Guattari talk about it again, um, we'll be able to know. This is still a matter of um, uncertainty for me because the peculiar sense that they use reflection here is, is very different from the way it appears elsewhere in the book. I feel like there's something specific that Deleuze and Guattari are trying to tell us here, and um, I haven't yet given up on trying to figure out what that is. But for the time being, we'll think of reflection as a mode of thinking, as a mode of thinking distinct from contemplation. One needs concepts, and the other doesn't. And the, the reason for including these seems to be to account for different kinds of thought. Maybe philosophy is too often con confused with just, well, just sitting around thinking. And there's many different kinds of thinking. So maybe contemplation represents conceptual thinking, whereas reflection ref ref uh, means non-conceptual thinking. Um, whereas ultimately philosophy is not just thinking, it's creative thinking. Ultimately with Deleuze, you know, and, and this is how Deleuze himself read philosophy, um, Deleuze was, was not just about parroting what people said. I mean, we don't want to just make shit up, um, but, you know, we also want to maybe open our minds up to, to the possibility that maybe Deleuze and Guattari write very obscurely at times, precisely because they want us to test things out for ourselves and experiment.